What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Currently I'm on the pediatric orthopedic uh, service, which means little kids who have fractures of their uh, extremities or deformities of their extremities. Some of these kids are born with uh, deformities of their hip or their knee or their leg. And in the orthopedics, we can do a lot of deformity correction or procedures to give these patients the best um, kind of um, uh, life ahead of them. Uh, so in pediatric orthopedic surgery, it takes four years of medical school, four years of, uh, five years of residency, and then one additional year of fellowship to be a pediatric orthopedic uh, surgeon. Um, the day-to-day, -day, usually starting off in the morning, if we have patients in the hospital, I try to see those patients kind of early as possible. Uh, right now I have two patients that are currently in the ICU. Um, and then after you see your patients in the hospital, you either go to OR for the day, depending on the day, or you go to clinic. Operating room can be from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. at night or later, or it can be like a short day. Yesterday we had five cases, and then I think I was done around 4 p.m. Um, on the days that you have clinic, that means you go see the patients in the office and you see them for uh, follow-up visits from surgery or their new patients who may have broken their arm over the weekend and we see them in clinic on like, like on a Monday. So it just depends on the day, kind of how your day goes. And um, either, like I said, either operating room or clinic, you see patients in the, in the hospital. And also uh, we take call. I was on call last night, uh, which means I can take home call, which I'm at home and my junior in the ER will call me if there's a patient with a fracture that needs surgery. So, um, and then when that, when that happens, we either go to surgery that night or we do it the next day. So, and we generally take call about three to four times per week on this, this particular service. Um, pediatric orthopedics is a lot of fun. You get to deal with a lot of uh, young um, uh, patients so it is uh, quite amusing in the clinic when we can sit down and play with them and talk to them. So <clears throat> it's a different pace from your adult trauma or your adult uh, orthopedics, but um, I think pediatric orthopedic surgery is a great field if you're interested in it. So what type of surgeries can a pediatric orthopedic surgeon do? Um, you can do pretty much any surgery in the body except the brain and the, uh, the, the, um, the belly. So you can do scoliosis surgery, spine surgery, you can do a, yesterday we did a knee scope which a patient had a, a uh, damage to his cartilage and we, we put a camera and a scope in his knee and looked on the monitor. That's called an arthroscopy. You can do um, surgery on someone's foot who has flat feet you can do hand surgery, someone who's broken their hand, uh, leg surgery. We did a femur <coughs> femur fracture yesterday where <coughs> someone broke their femur. We put a metal rod down their femur. So any part of the body, um, when someone has hip dysplasia, which means that their hips are not developed properly, we can do uh, we can cut their bone and, and realign their bone so that the hip joint is aligned. That's called an osteotomy. Um, so lots of cool procedures in pediatric orthopedic surgery. You get to work with a wide variety range of patients as well from uh, patients who are just born one day old to patients who are 18. Um, I got called from the nursery about a patient who had, was just born just a few hours ago and they were concerned about her feet so I went to go take a look at her. So pediatrics is a wide variety of procedures and a wide range of patients. Um, um, there you go. So what is the difference between a pediatrician and a pediatric orthopedic surgeon? Pediatricians go to four years of medical school and three years of residency. A pediatric orthopedic surgeon is one who goes to four years of medical school, five years of residency, and one year of additional fellowship or training. Pediatricians see patients in the office like a common cold or they have an ear infection or um, right after a baby is delivered. Pediatric orthopedic surgeons, they operate on patients. So the patient needs surgery. 
if that young patient that came to the pedi uh, pediatrician needed surgery, he would refer them, he or she would refer them to a pediatric orthopedic surgeon to uh, perform the surgery and care of that patient after surgery. So it's about 6 a.m. I just got to the hospital. I have a few patients that I need to see. These are patients that I operated on over the last few days and they're in the hospital. They will stay in the hospital until their pain is controlled and also when they work with physical therapy. One of them is a patient who had a hip replacement, which means we go in and give them an artificial hip and they need to be able to walk with physical therapy in order to go home. Um, and also make sure their pain's controlled. So, about to go see those patients. I'll see you shortly. So it was about seven o'clock, I just got called to uh, do a emergent case, a case of a little kid who is eight years old. He fell off with some monkey bars and uh, broke his wrist and his elbow. I'll show you some x-rays here. That's his wrist there, it is broken, I'll move this out the way. Let me show you his elbow. Pretty comminuted fracture of his elbow. <clears throat> so we're gonna put some pins and possibly a metal plate to fix this fracture and um, I'll check in after the case. So we just finished a case. These are the x-rays of his wrist. You can see pins that are in his wrist and pins that are in his elbow. Pretty bad fracture, but I think he will do well. We'll get these pins out in the next four to uh, about four weeks or so, we'll take these pins out and then uh, his bone to be healed. What's up everyone? It is about 5.30 a.m. Uh, today we have what's called the ORTI, the Orto Orthopedic in Training Examination. It's a annual test that we take every year in residency and every orthopedic surgery resident in the country takes this test pretty much on the same day. Um, it is a eight hour test to give us 10 hours to take it because you have some breaks that you're allowed to take and it basically goes over anything in orthopedic surgery from basic science, from genetics, from statistics to surgical approaches, when is surgery indicated, how would you do the surgery, anatomy, physiology, pathology. So it comprises um, a lot of different aspects of not only orthopedic surgery, but just being a physician in general. And basically what it does is it prepares you or the <clears throat> how well you do on the test indicates how well you will do on your um, orthopedic surgery boards once orthopedic surgery residency is done. So um, you have to study for it throughout the year. In addition to being very busy as a surgery resident, um, you have to uh, study, come home and study. Otherwise, uh, you know, you get put on probation, you get you could get kicked out of your program if you don't do well, or you got a remediation classes. So, and you're compared to your peers. So as a fourth year resident, this is my fourth year of taking it, um, I get paired compared to fourth year residents from all over the country and also the fourth year residents here in my program. Um, and then the interns are compared to interns and um, and that's how they can compare you. So they give you a percentile. You're the 50th percentile in the country, um, etc. So like, <clears throat> like I said, even as a, uh, excuse me, uh, even as a orthopedic surgery resident, was is pretty busy, you still have to study. Like last night I was on call, that's why I feel a little bit under the weather this morning. Um, and I had to go do a emergent operation on a um, little kid because she had a, he had an infection 
Um, I had to uh, take him to surgery last night. So I was up pretty late, still trying to, I still came home and tried to review my last minute notes, but um, it can get quite busy. And it's about 5.30 right now. And I had to go see some patients in the hospital before my test. So I want to make sure patients are taken care of. I'll be in the testing center for about eight or nine hours. So my pager gets turned off, my phone gets turned off. So um, when we have some, some physician assistants that will take care of our patients while we're taking the test. So our entire program, 30 residents, 30 doctors, will be taking the test today and this morning. It starts at 7 a.m. and it ends around 5 or 6 p.m., depending on how many breaks you take. Every orthopedic surgery resident in the country is taking this exam today. And uh, other programs have it as well. Emergency medicine, you have a test that you have to take every year to compare to your peers. Uh, plastic surgery, general surgery, they have their um, um, training exam that they take. So um, it's called the OITE, O-I-T-E. We take it every year, the second Saturday of November. Um, and I'll be taking it soon. You guys wish me luck. I'll check in after the, the um, exam. See you later. So I just got done um, seeing my patients. About to go take this test. We're gonna do well today. Stay in positive thoughts. I've been preparing for this all year. Um, we're gonna stop by the uh, pediatric ER. I wanna show you guys how nice this ER is. Pediatric ER is very nice here. Lots of toys, TVs, this big screen monitor. Um, we're gonna go hit it up soon and check it out on the way to my test. What's up everyone? I just finished my exam. Uh, it took me, took me a little over eight hours to finish it. Um, pretty challenging exam. And, um, but I, you know, I got through it. You learn to, you take so many tests along this road that uh, basically it's just another test. I'm not saying that to minimize the importance of it, but um, uh, you take so many tests in medical school and residency that I mean, you just learn to uh, just take them. But some tips for you guys for taking the exams. I think it's important to um, have a plan that you're going to attack. If you have a test in four weeks, you should have a plan every single day. You should have listed out what you're going to study, what you need to accomplish, what questions you need to read, what chapters you need to review. Um, when it gets closer to the test date, I study with uh, note cards for those small little details like the medications, the microbiology, the basic science. I study with uh, note cards. Um, but on the test day, I think it's important to go to your test center and just get a feel of where things are. This is where I need to be the next morning. This is uh, where I'm going to sit. These are the rules. You can't bring food in there or blah, blah, blah. Uh, just get an understanding because that relieves a lot of stress. And the day of the test, what I usually do is I look at the question, the answers first to get a, a gauge of how they're going to ask the question. Because there are a lot of distractors that they might try to throw in, in the question stand that be useless information. So it's important to, for me, I, I felt it best to look at the answers really quickly just to gauge to see how they're going to ask the information. You may not even need to look at the images or the pathology because you can answer the question just with um, just looking at the answers. So I always uh, trust your instinct. Um, if you feel like an answer choice is the answer, go with it. Trust your instinct. You prepared for it and it's going to pay off. So always um, I always mark answers and questions that I'm kind of unsure about and I go back to those at the end of the test and sometimes that may give you some clarifications reading other question stems or kind of as time goes on to get to think about it a little more so take your time uh, don't rush through the test and um, you know if you put in the work you'll produce some results but um, my exam is over I have to get ready for next year's exam. That'll be my fifth year of taking it. 
Uh, so and then after that, I take my board. So it goes by fast. Um, you definitely have to stay disciplined and stay focused in your year. It's not like medical school where they tell you, oh, you need to go home and study this, blah, blah, blah. Throughout the year in residency, you have to sit down and you have to study. There's no guideline. There's no template. They don't tell you what to study. You just have to study. So, And uh, I, found, I found that to be kind of challenging at first, but it gets better and more manageable with time. But this is Dr. Webb here. If you guys have any more questions, uh, thank you for watching this episode of Pediatric Orthopedic Surgery, which is a lot of fun. Uh, residency is quite busy. But, uh, you know, spending time with the kids and seeing them smile and play, uh, that just, um, you know, lightens my day up because it's so much fun to see these young kids so happy after you fix their bones or correct some deformity or uh, fix something that is wrong with them um, and see the parents happy as well. So pediatric orthopedic surgery is a great field. You, should, you guys should definitely consider it. We need more pediatric orthopedic surgeons or just surgeons in general. So if you guys have any questions, anything that I can do to help you move along further in that path of reaching your goals, please let me know. I didn't have people to, a lot of people to help me along the way. So that's why I'm so passionate about helping you guys. Please share this video. Please subscribe for, so I will be able to put, put out more content, reach more people. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm going to be bringing a new video for you guys. And it's challenging to me because I'm busy as an orthopedic surgery resident, author, motivational speaker. Um, but I'm so passionate about this. I love doing this. I love helping you guys. All, all I ask is that you guys share my videos with your friends, your families, so that I can make my help my channel grow and reach more people. So we'll see you next time. Email is overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com or my website, AntonioWebMD.com. We'll see you next time.